This video presentation is brought to you by the Pro Mathematics Academy. Okay guys, welcome back to another video presentation brought to you in part by the Pro Mathematics Academy. In this video, we'll be continuing our exercise set number two, question number three, which requires us to use some matrix algebra in order to prove some equations. All right, so we start by looking at question number three, which gives us the square matrices A and B are such that AB is equal to A and BA is equal to B. Prove that A squared is equal to A. Okay, so starting with our left-hand side, all right, A squared is equal to A times A, right? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the AB expression given to us and I'm going to replace that with only one of these A's, okay? So that now what I have is AB times A, which I can regroup as AB times A, but now this is A times BA, right? And if we recall from here, we know that BA is equal to B. So now we can say that this is A times B, but AB is equal to A. So therefore, our proof is complete. All right, moving right along to the second part of this question, right, which asks us to prove that B square is equal to B. So now taking our left-hand side, as usual, here we see that B squared is equal to B multiplied by B, right? And we're going to take one of those B's from before and we're going to replace that with BA. So here we have BA times B, which is the same as BAB, which now I can group the AB on the left. Well, the AB that's on the right. This becomes B times AB, which is now equal to B times A. And if we recall, BA is equal to B. So therefore... We have proven what was required. Okay. Next, we look at how we can prove that A minus B all squared is equal to zero. And here, we want to keep in mind that this is the zero matrix. Okay. So this is not the number zero, but that is the zero matrix. Now, let's take our left hand side. So our left-hand side says that we have A minus B all squared, which is equal to A minus B times A minus B, right? And now we take that and we write it as A squared, right? Minus B A, right? Minus A B plus b squared okay so here i can recall that a squared is equal to a so here i'll write a minus b because b a is b minus a because a b is a and now b squared is also b so therefore we are now left with a minus a minus b plus b which means we now have zero minus zero which is equal to zero the zero matrix, okay? So therefore, we can say that our proof is done. Well, actually, let's adjust this to say that we are equal to our left or right hand side. Right? And our proof is complete. Next, we continue along with our series of questions, right? So this question is saying that the matrices A and B are invertible and we are to use that to prove that AB is invertible and the inverse is equal to B inverse, A inverse. So in order to do this proof, we need to recall two things, okay? Recall one, the inverse of a matrix M, right here I'm going to choose M to be my matrix, must be unique all right that means that if an inverse exists 
then there is only one inverse. Okay? The second thing we want to recall is that the inverse must satisfy the following equations. So if Z is the inverse of M, then Zm is equal to the identity matrix and Mz is equal to the identity matrix. Okay, guys? So these represent the two equations that the inverse of any matrix must satisfy. So we begin our proof. So we're going to take AB and we're going to multiply AB times B inverse A inverse. Okay, this is equal to AB B inverse times A inverse. But what is B times B inverse? This simply means we now end up with A times I times A inverse, which now gives us a times A inverse, which is equal to I. So here we see that AB times B inverse, A inverse, is equal to I. So now we're going to examine B inverse, A inverse, times AB, right? So this is equal to B inverse, A inverse, times A times B here, A inverse times A gives us B inverse times I times B, but if I multiply B inverse times I, I am left with B inverse, and I still have my B, so therefore B inverse times B is also equal to I, so therefore we have proven that B inverse, A inverse, times AB is also equal to I. So since, let's write this down in a different color. Since B inverse, A inverse, satisfies both equations, it must be the inverse of A, B, okay? So since it satisfies the equations and we know that the inverse must be unique, that means there can be no other inverses, right? So we have proven that B inverse, A inverse is in fact the only inverse and the inverse of A, B. Moving right along. Now we're asked to prove that Now we're asked to prove that because A is invertible, A transpose is also invertible, and we're to prove that the inverse of A transpose is equal to A inverse transpose, okay? So likewise, here, the only thing we want to recall is that Let's make some space for this. Recall that A inverse times A is equal to I and A times A inverse is equal to I. Also, when we take AB and we transpose it, it is equal to B transposed, A transposed, okay? Now, let's begin our proof. So we need to show that when we multiply A transpose 
times A inverse transpose, it is equal to I, right? And when we take A inverse transpose times A transpose, it is also equal to I. If we prove that this inverse satisfies both of these conditions, then it is the only inverse, which means it is the inverse, okay? So, this is just a roadmap to our proof. So let's go. Now, A transpose times A inverse transpose is the same as A inverse times A all transpose, which is equal to I transpose, which is equal to I. So therefore, we have proven one part. Let's say, and A transpose, right? Well, let's take our second, let's take the second side. A inverse transpose times A transpose is equal to A times A inverse transpose, which is equal to I transpose, which is equal to I. So therefore, A inverse transpose is the inverse, is the inverse of A transpose. Okay? Nice. Let's move on to this other question. Now, to prove this relation, recall that A times A inverse is equal to I, right? Taking the determinant of both sides gives the determinant of A times A inverse is equal to the determinant of the identity matrix. This now means we have the determinant of A, right, times the determinant of A inverse being equal to 1 because the determinant of the identity matrix is 1. This now means that I can take the determinant of the inverse matrix and write it as 1 divided by determinant of A. I'm simply transposing there. So this then means that we have the determinant of A inverse being equal to determinant of A reciprocal. Okay? Recall that the determinant of A is not a matrix, okay? I know persons oftentimes get this confused. The determinant of A is not a matrix. That is it for this it video. Is Please remember to hit the notification number. Like, share, and subscribe for future post notifications. Okay.